warning, this is a movie discussion as well as a movie review and there are tons of spoilers. Passengers, white folks done white flighted they ass to a whole nother galaxy. And I just want to start out by saying this movie ain't made no goddamn sense. There's no real person awake at all times on a 113 year flight. Just in case, oh, I don't know, the ship gets damaged by some random ass space rubbish. This is supposed to be a sci-fi movie. And all the dumbest shit about it is the sci-fi shit. The shit, the, the ship is fucked up, okay? And Jim, played by Chris Pratt, he said everything on the ship has a replacement part. Who the fuck gonna replace the shit? Who gonna fix it? Everybody sleep. They should be on a rotating awake schedule, or at the very least, there should be a system or protocol something in place to wake somebody up if the ship malfunctions, which it does repeatedly in various locations on the ship and there's no alert there's no there's no system there's no fail safe how advanced are you that you can fly to another galaxy but you can't build in a system to alert the crew to malfunctions come on and let me just get back it up a second here because I you know I got a little riled up um the quick synopsis uh Passenger stars Chris Pratt as Jim and Jennifer Lawrence as Aurora, and they wake up 90 years too early on a, a fucking spaceship, okay? It's from Earth, it's, it, and it's headed to another galaxy, and they wake up, um, it's a 120-year trip, and they wake up 90 years too early. Plot twist. Let's just jump right to it. Jim woke up too early. He was awakened by a collision that rattled the ship, and he was lonely, so he woke Aurora up too. He didn't even know her. <laughs> ain't that a bitch? You know, I ain't gonna lie. If that was my bae, I would have woke his ass up too. Like, we just gonna be SOL together. But that was fucked up, Jim. He didn't even know her. And this was the basis for what becomes a love story, which is kind of gross, but whatever. So, um, you know, it's just pretty much a love story in space. Um, you know, with two easy on the eyes looking people um I don't think they're attractive but you know whatever there's an audience that does and I didn't like a lot of things about this film I'm just gonna kind of like roast this roast this film um what type of dumbass spaceship is this who programmed this shit how about if you can get people to hibernate for 120 years if you could do this scientifically Maybe you should program the ship to know that people are supposed to be hibernating. If somebody wakes up, it shouldn't be holograms greeting them. The hologram should be like, oh shit, uh, something, we fucked up. Somebody fucked up. Ring a fucking alarm, something. The ship is giving tours and shit like, look at this star over here. Bitch, everybody is asleep. Who the fuck are you talking to? Arthur, the android bartender, he should have been turned the fuck off. He just gonna stand there for a hundred something years polishing a glass? Really? Holograms out here giving presentations? Like, you didn't even program the ship to know if something had gone wrong? So you don't bother having <laughs> members of the crew awake, but then you also don't bother programming the ship, you know, with something with the, they should be doing in case something unplanned occurs. So next, um, Jim is a mechanic, okay? When the fuck did he learn how to astronaut? Yes, I used astronaut as a verb. How he just put on a space suit and just mosey his ass on out to space. I, you know, okay. I guess uh, some of that shit you could figure out, okay. Because <laughs> the ship is happily telling him what to do. Because the ship don't give a fuck. There ain't no kind of safety measures, protocol. I don't know. Just, the ship just don't care who the hell doing what. He, The ship like pushed this button over here. Pushed this lever over here. But dude, you ain't no astronaut. I ain't pushing shit. And I certainly ain't about to go out to space and, and Bundy jump my ass off the ship all into the darkness. Oh, Guardian of the Galaxy head ass. This is the wrong movie for that shit. There's no way a regular person would have figured that out. And then next, <laughs> I'm going to need this spaceship to have a better security clearance system altogether. Jim had access to all kind of shit, passenger files and shit, but he couldn't get a decent meal out the meal machine because he's a peasant mechanic. And his card or whatever wouldn't let him. So, you know, you get to the point that Jim, um, you know, he's like, fuck morals. I'm lonely. I need some company. Preferably some company with the vagina. And, and you know, that's some creepy ass, you know, forensic file shit. But at least he agonized over it. You know, it was clearly a moral dilemma. And, you know, he was even trying to get Arthur to co-sign that shit. And even Arthur was like, look, I'm just the fucking robot. I ain't got shit to do with this. 
You know, and if you think too deep into it, you start to think about stuff beyond, you know, morality or the lack thereof. What if he was ugly and, you know, Aurora woke up and that was all she had to deal with? Or, you know, what if she's a lesbian, you know? that uh, You know, so obviously none of that would have worked. Um, and I guess... <laughs> My biggest dislike about this movie really is I think it was it was really predictable. Um, it was just literally every single step, everything that happens, you know what's going to happen. You know um, she's going to find out that he woke her up. And you know she's going to be mad. You know she's going to get over it. And you know, you know when they're trying to fix the ship, you know she's going to save him. I mean, it was just everything about it was just very cliche and very, you know, predictable. And also, <laughs> something that didn't make sense, Aurora... She's like, oh, my dream is to travel, you know, millions of light years away and stay for a year and then travel back to Earth. And she wanted to be like 260 years into the future and write a book about it. Why? Because nobody's done that before. But tell me this. Why hasn't anyone done that before? I would imagine if, if this, you know, ship is going back and forth, somebody has done this before. If for no other reason, research. You can't let people, this is a, a company, you can't let people do this without nobody ever doing it before okay um so next okay Lawrence Fishburne he wakes up why did he die five minutes later this medical pod was just like the uh, machinification yes I made that word up it's like a literal representation of WebMD except it's true and the machine was like dude you got 7,452 disorders and you finna die right now here have some aspirin and i'm like how is it that morpheus I, he couldn't even come up with anything else to do so he's like look y'all two gotta fix the ship what i'd have been like me what the fuck was the plan if a mechanic didn't happen to be awake i just i feel like this whole movie like i said the sci-fi part was almost like an afterthought like they put this love story together uh, i guess you can call it that and then they just put all this dumb shit around it you got all these goddamn robots the fucking ship should fix itself so then you know there's only one medical pod for over five thousand people not even two come on i know it works fast but come on so i mean i don't know there was some other other little things that also got on my nerves like when the spaceship turned off the gravity aurora was like drowning <laughs> she was unconscious in this big water bubble in the sky and then it like fell out the sky and all of a sudden she wasn't drowning no more I was like okay okay whatever did she resuscitate herself I don't know um so overall just wrapping up the dislikes I mean the plot was okay the the characters were vanilla and boring to me Aurora's character was so one-dimensional I was generally unenthused by her presence you know she's a writer with a little personality beyond her joy of writing I just honestly didn't give a fuck about her or him for that matter. Um, so overall, I felt that that character development was lacking. Um, so those are all my issues. <laughs> um, I did like the the movie visually. I enjoyed it. The action, the ship. Uh, I mean, just like the, the VIP suites, the machines, like the the technology, just the overall futuristic look. I thought they did a great job. Hell, I wanted to live on that ship. Um, and anyway, <laughs> at some point, you know, I thought the spaceship was like about to go full ghost in the machine, ghost in the machine on their ass, you know, and I was like, this spaceship is fucking with them. Um, <laughs> I thought it was doing that shit on purpose. Um, and, and then with Lawrence Fishburne there, it, it reminded me of, uh, the 1997, I believe, underrated sci-fi thriller Event Horizon. Um, and of course this wouldn't be the first movie about a, a machine going rogue, but uh, that's not exactly what happened. Um, and it probably wasn't a good idea for them to make a little forest on the ship. I don't think I need to explain that. So I I rated this movie a like three or four out of ten, <laughs> which means that I, I didn't think it was terrible. I mean, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. But, you know, if this were like just a flat out review, I'd be like, hey, watch this shit on cable on a rainy day when you ain't got nothing else to do. Because, um, like I said, I think it's some really cool things about it. But I just, I think it was put together. I think they, they tried to force... A narrative that they wanted to and I don't think they put a lot of thought into some of it so um follow me on twitter at moviebuffchick1 and like and subscribe